everyone and welcome back to part three of our old barn um i don't know how you are feeling about this but i'm i'm really enjoying this one it's it, i don't know it just feels to be flowing quite nicely so i'm hoping that you're enjoying it along with me and eagerly awaiting the next installment um so this one will go up on wednesday wednesday night at eight o'clock on YouTube UK time. First of May, I do believe. Oh, Wednesday the first of May, gosh. Where's the year gone already? Um so we're gonna try and put this up Wednesdays and Saturdays. So that's twice uh, twice a week. Um because I think once when we're doing the Tuscan House I think once a week was a bit it's too much gap in between and I kinda of lost momentum with it. I know that some of you were just brilliant, just kept plugging on through. And actually, I really think that we are, we learnt a lot doing the Tuscan House, a lot of brush handling skills, colour mixing, whatever. I think it, um, I think it, I do think there's a lot in there and it helped us. I'm also planning, it's just at the planning stage yet, I haven't really run it past Mr H, who's going to flip out in a minute, um, that we do other tutorials as well. Maybe not quite so basic, um, not, you know, not much more. Uh, than a beginner but just trot on a bit more with it and see see where we get to with that uh, however that also includes Mr H editing more videos and that just eats his time up I know it does he's very good about it but so anyway let's get cracking Right, that's, that's me, me Nicola. <laughs> um, so here's our old barn. This is where we left it last time. Uh, and I couldn't really progress much further because I was using the golden open paints and they were doing what golden open paints should do and they were staying open. Uh, so I, I couldn't really touch anything anymore. Today what I'm proposing that we do is um, just, just brighten this grass up a bit so it's dry, very dull, needs some, some colour in it, and put our fine alternate colours uh, into the tree. Having done that, what I then like to do, so we really feel that we're progressing, is do this top part of the roof of this, we'll call it a box car, I think that's probably what it is, um, the one that we're looking through. Um, so get this, do this roof, which of course fits in there. I don't want to do uh, this part or this part because I haven't finished, the, you know, we haven't even started and I might finish the old barn or the grass. That'll come into play as we, as we do those. Um, but our reference picture, although it's an exact printout of, uh, of the reference uh, picture, it's quite dark uh, around here. And that's not a bad thing for a photograph, that's really good, it gives lots of contrast and we want that contrast too in our, photograph, in our picture, but maybe just not all quite so dark. And so I have um, been on Photoshop and I've lightened it so I get more, you can see more details. And I don't worry what it's done to this part, um, it's lightened it to and it's overly light now, it's looks kind of overexposed. But we want the details for these and I will insert a small video sometime around now um, so you can see how, how you do that, how to get into Photoshop. If you haven't got Photoshop, there's a free app called GIMP, which is like Photoshop but it's free. But I'll show you how to do it on Photoshop because that's what I've got. So here's our image of our old barn opened up in Photoshop. You need to go along the top here. You've got Quick Guided and Expert. Just go to Quick. You don't need to anything too fancy today. 
And down the right hand side, you'll see this list of things that we can alter very simply. Uh, we need to go to lighting. Um, yeah, along the sort of sub menu here, you've got shadows, mid tones, and highlights. And we need to alter shadows, which is the one on the left. And then you get nine little vignettes, little pictures of our picture. And you can see as we scroll across them, they change. And what they're doing in actual fact is lightening the shadows by a percentage each time that we do that. Now that one, which is number nine, which is the 100% altered shadows, I think is too light for us. It's too washed out. And we need, we need to still see some of the colour of the wood uh, in some sort of realistic way. And that's still too light, too light. That one looks good. It's coming through as lovely, rich mahogany colours. And I think that's the one um, I'll go with, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, six, one along. And if you look at the slider here, it's 62. So that's just says in little numbers to the right of the slider, 62. So that's that. It's ready to print out. Um, print it out uh, as a reference picture on just A4 or something. And then print it out, I would say, print it out the sides of your canvas so as you've got something to transfer onto your canvas because it's there's quite a lot of woodwork and stuff around here. And I think it will be helpful to print it out the size of the canvas so as we can transfer those details onto it. And that is that. Okay, okay so, so I hope, hope you understood that, that and you've printed, printed yourself off a reference photo uh, that's looking pretty similar to mine. So we'll just we'll start with the start with the trees because I want to get them on the tree I should say. I want it to be really dry um, before I start doing this. I want some orange from my autumn. I'm using food acrylics today. I'm not using the uh, open ones today because I want this to be dry, really dry before we start putting the roof on. And if I use the opens, it wouldn't be. Uh, the reason I'm using fluids, no reason whatsoever, they were the ones that came to hand. Uh, that, that's the only reason for that. Right, back to my little, um, it's not a very good order, this orange angle here, but let's just mix blue orange for our autumn, autumn trees. Now that's, as you can see, it's blended rather than mixed. There's still bits of red, there's still bits of yellow, but that's good. That's what we want. So let's just start on this and just give it a bit of colour with highlights. Make it look like it's uh, autumn time, uh, not spring blossom. So the bulk of the leaves on this uh, uh, tree seem to be in the centre in this section here. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure where that, where that line comes up, so I'll just make sure we've got it covered. We can go back in with red um, or yellow. Or both, if you really want to. spent all this morning, literally all this morning, um, going through photographs on some of the sites that have photographs for uh, where the photographers put their work so you can paint them, they don't have any royalties or copyrights or whatever. Um, and I've I'm absolutely bothered by them. You think you think that every photograph that looks nice would make a good painting, but that isn't the case. I'll, I'll 
show you that um, some sometime. Um, but it's certainly not, not the case. So after looking at well over a thousand images, well, well over, probably many more, I've got, got about six, I think, that I think would really make a nice painting. That's me doing my homework. So you see, we can still see the sky through that, um, which is really nice. A lot of people, when they do trees, make them very solid. And actually, the next time that you're out and you can see trees anywhere, have a look. Just look through the tree, and you'll see that you can see so much sky through it. It's not a solid thing. Um, and that's a mistake that um, beginners often make. They make the things very solid. So that's the orange in there. I'm just going to come back in with a little bit of yellow. And that should be our tree done. Yeah, as I say, I'm using fluid um, today, fluid acrylics. There's no reason. Uh, Colours are the same across the whole, all of the uh, paints that Golden do, the open, the fluid and the high flow. If it says it's titanium white, it's titanium white in all of those uh, uh, concoctions, whatever they're called. Oh, that looks all to me now, I think. So when I looked at it, um, after last time when I looked at it, I thought, oh, it looks like it's got blossom on it. Which would be fine if we were doing a spring painting. <laughs> okay. For the people who aren't following along, Feel they can't or they can't commit to the time or whatever it may be. Um, on Saturday night, just past my, the regular thing that I do on my group, this acrylic painter box group, we did a little barn and make by six, uh, just so they don't feel they're missing out too much. But it was, you know, so it was as quick as I could paint it. Uh, so something has to be sacrificed for speed. I suspect it was a bit of detail, really. So, that's the tree. Does it look all to me enough for you, Mr H? I think it does. Excellent. This piece here is floating through. Free, has got no branch at all. Oh, no, it's coming up from here. Oh, that's all right. I feel better for a minute. Does it? Excellent. Maybe not quite yet. So, for this, uh, the grass that we've got here, that I uh, put in last time. It, it's fine, I've got, I mean, I quite like it. It looks like far away grass, but actually when you look at the reference, it's it's this yellow colour, it's all dyed black. Um, you know, some of, it's been up, it's seeded, and it's just gone to straw, really. Um, so I think we need to make it look more straw-ish. Straw-ish grass. So this is cad yellow deep, and it is deep, and it's um it's a Winsor and Newton gallery acrylic, and I'm using it because I've got it. I don't know if I necessarily go out and buy it. I'm not saying I wouldn't buy it either, but it's just you know for me you see it, it's a different sort of thing to the one I usually use, and it's just literally we were tidying somewhere out um, the other day. Well, Mr. Rich was tidying somewhere and he came down with this handful of um, Windsor and Newton Gallery acrylics. So he said, what do you want to do with these? 
weekly pay if they're not disabled or not. So I think they're okay. Now, I'm just going to have a little trial with this brush. It's, um, well, it's a fan brush. It's described as a fan brush, 2.0. So, but it's all um, sort of, it's old and it's gone like fingers. So let's give that a go and see if that actually helps us in any way to get this brass. So I'm mixing a bit of that card deep through the yellow that we had, um, which is giving us a very bright yellow. Let's stick a bit of that in there and see what we get. That's a nice orangey colour. I think I'm going to have to let that down with a bit of water. A bit of water. A bit of white because it is uh, kind of bright. I'm very mind always that um, the colour that dries darker. And I will always say in that tea, but you really do have to be aware of it. Let's just see if it's soft. It should. Let's try that. And now that's high flow. And once again, the reason I'm using it is because it came to hand. Um, not for any other reason. Yeah, I've got a little bit of green. That's great. And that'll be okay for an autumn colour. So let's just see what this. Rake does. Oh, yeah, it does rake and marks. I think you can probably just use one part of it if you want to. You sort of hold it on its side. Dark there, which I don't want to cover with completely. Okay, that's all right. It is in a very far distance, um, but no, I don't know what does that look like on one of me. I think that's cheered that up a little bit. So if it's cheered up, I'm cheered up, and we're all cheered up. That does feel dry to the touch, but if you'll forgive me, I just want to dry it with a hairdryer. I need to be really sure that it's dry. When I'm drying stuff, you should be singing little songs. I think you'd find that the air dryer is more in tune than I am, <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> How many views do you want to lose? <laughs> I'm just going to pick up what's left of this uh, red here. This is one of the joys of the fluid acrylic. You can actually save quite a bit of it if you've uh, been a bit generous when you've put it out. Even if it was the voice, they'd be turning the chairs so they could throw things at me. Oh, don't be so awful. I mean, maybe true, but no need for it. I have to clean that, aren't I? I'm also going to end up with orange. Oh, no. It's broken again. You'd think it was the only one we had, wouldn't you? I mean, I have several of this size. I'm sure I can fix it. I'm sure you can. Well, there might be a bit of red going in there with it but I've saved some which makes me feel better. Right, so clean the palette knife off, not too vigorously. Just gonna wipe a bit of that away. So sorry about the sound. We did have a problem with the sound earlier on um but it should definitely be sorted by now. I don't need that either actually, so that can go. Right, let's really get cracking, shall we? So we need to draw a line, or reinstate a line that we already had actually, um, for our part of the roof that we're going to do. 
Um, I'm just going to put the end put the end parts in um, because if I do that, because it's hard on the one that hasn't been written. Let's have a look at my reference. Yeah, just to kind of go straight along. I think so. We're all right. Straight to there. And this one comes down. Oh, it doesn't because it's got a bit of jiggery pokery in it. The roof comes to there. I'm going to have to draw that in, I think. It comes to there, then it goes out to make way for this door to do that. and then it comes straight across at that and it's very hard to see it on on our uh, on this one you you may wish it may be worth your while actually to uh print out another one of these i would but i need some more toner in my uh printer so i'm sure it can't be done today so that's okay we can see where we're going this is the the line and that's the line sort of the inside line the inside line right so i'm just gonna put some frog tape on it Touch it firmly to one end and then pull as you apply it and you'll get a much better straight line. Like that. So everything above there is roof. So for that then we need, uh, well, quite a boring set of colours out really, but you know, not going to be boring when we've finished with them. We need some uh, raw umber, we need some burnt umber, we may need some little bit of black. I think. Yikes. We need, I'm going to put out some titanium buff. This is just sort of off white kind of colour. Uh, if you don't own that, don't panic. You can just mix white with a little yellow ochre and you will have this colour. It's just they make it. I use it quite a, quite a bit, so I bought it. I also have white here, should it should I need it. Um, and I've also got a Liquitex one today, which is called uh, Raw Sienna, <laughs> um, which I might, you know, we might need for some of these parts up here are quite bright. But if we need it, I'll put it out. That's the best that I can say. Right. So with reference to our um, photograph. The first thing that happens is this bit down here and along and along the masking tape is brown. I can't um, I can't give myself any more help because I can't see it on my reference picture. So you might find that it's um, helpful, as I say, to print out. Your larger reference one and it's quite a dark color so let's go for the burnt umber let's just mix a little bit of raw umber in with that because it's not the darkest in the world and it just it starts where the door comes down so that's the line it must be there i think it's gonna make life easier for me to print out we don't need all of it we just need that top yeah. 
I'm taking a gamble on this thing going to be up there. It is very straight this line, so don't worry about using the masking, masking tape to um, cuddle up to it because uh, although it's old and jiggered, that this line in particular is straight. You need to put a fair bit of paint on here because we've got some blue from the sky to cover over. So don't be uh, shy with the paint. And then as we get to um, about there where that line comes up where this line comes up it just sort of fades away this um, dark dark line so it's about there and it just it just sort of fades away the top part carries on I think A lighter colour. So I think that's about the thickness that I need it. I need it to be quite straight. So I'm actually going to have to move my canvas to get a good straight edge on that. Make sure you've got a good chisel edge and just come down very straight. And if you, you know, if you're not sure about um, painting straight lines, it's this is good practice because it's not really going to matter if it's not straight. Um, but you could use a ruler to paint up to, or you could actually put another piece of masking tape up there, um, so to get a straight, straight edge. But it's a good thing to practice. So when you really need a straight edge, you can draw one. Right, so that's that. So what happens next? There's a little sliver of a light colour that goes along to this end and becomes quite dominant. And that looks to me like a titanium buff, I would say. It darkens a little in the middle, but we'll not worry about that. So it's just a little sliver of it, and it comes up at both ends. Can't really see this on the uh, on the canvas, but you will when it's finished. I think I'm not getting this quite dark enough. I'm just going to add a mere touch of the um, burnt umber to that. Too much. No, that's fine. I am picking up a bit of the umber as I go along here, which is quite nice. I quite like it. It's quite a roundy sort of colour. And light brown, I should say. Once again, we're drawing a straight, straight line along the top of that. So as I say, you know, don't beat yourself up if this isn't straight, 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 because uh, it's old. Further along the. Uh, the umber is getting drier, so it's getting, it's getting lighter. So this then goes into pretty much that, um, actually it's got quite a yellow hue to it, we'll, we'll worry about that later. Come on over here, I think. I like this nice sort of melding together of colours. Down here. And there's a light bit along here. Where do I want to put it there? Yeah, 
Okay, so that's our line, the sort of dividing line, if you like, in there. And above it, above that dividing line, is a, a lighter, dark uh, row umber. So let's mix. Mix a little bit of row umber through that that we've just had. That's a good colour. It's good for colour mixing, isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, still going all right, I think, here. I think we need a line along here. Somewhere it's gone a bit wrong somewhere along the way here. That'll be near enough. I don't think I've allowed enough room my door jam bit but you know you can take your time be careful with it make sure you get it how you want it i'm sure that this one will look fine fine and dandy so all of this that i'm painting here fits into that bit there Line there from that bit. Okay. I think I'm free freewheeling this now. There's another section here. It's it's this part. The inner part. Some um, burnt umber with some of that uh, tiny umber. That's a nice colour for there, I think. Once we get our colours blocked in, we can come back over them and you know put glazes on, put uh, other colours over the top. Just you know, really define them properly. We just really need to get the colours on. There's a section here that's just quite light. I'm going to put that on and let it fade into that colour that we are applying anyway. It's going to go on there like that. It is really worth taking your time getting to know the paint and know where you are in it because it's so easy to get lost. Especially when you're in an area like this that's kind of brown, brown and more brown. I mean there are plenty of different shades of brown here, but it's hard sorting out in your head where the actions go. So don't worry about sort of clunky joins like that. We can come back and uh, sort that out. And I'm just going to add a little bit of a bit more of this titanium buff to that and bring it back to the corner. Right, okay, I think that's not too bad. Let's just wipe our brush off and just drag that out. Okay, so there we are. Right, I'm happy with where I am now at the minute. So, this is our door jam going to there. And then this, that line there, is this line across the top of all that. So we're all right. We're, all, we're doing okay. Right, so I'll stop for a moment there because I was getting a bit lost in what I was doing. Um, and I've had I've asked Mr. Handyman if he'd print me out this um I've forgotten the word for it. This pattern piece, whatever it is. Uh, so I can put my paper, transfer paper in between and get some proper lines of where I should be going because I may have been going a little off. 
so that's my trip to you is print print out the lightning version because otherwise we will well I certainly was getting lost so this is the line that we've just put in I think along there so I've put that in just to make sure that we're something like right this is all fairly dark um, and then it comes to here and there's this plate that I think has got something to do with the fact that it was a sliding door on the boxcar. I may be right, I may be wrong, but it's there. It's a bit of weird metal. And this as well seems to go up at the stuff like that. So it's got a corner on it there. Looks a bit like a toilet system, to be honest. It's that sort of shape. Well, the shape we had in olden days. <laughs> um, and then there's a line comes along here, like that. Um, and then there's these, which I think are sort of panels that make up the roof of the thing. Now then, this is this looks like it's a hook for. I'm not sure what, but it certainly looks like it's got a hook sort of thing on the end there. And then we've got another of these panels that come down here. Now then, this is where the sort of jiggery pokery starts. I mean, I drew that line in already. But we've got this one that comes at an angle out of, sort of towards us, towards the view, if you like. And then the big timber goes across there, across there. And it joins it with what we've already got. And there's a, some sort of bolt and there's a name there, CNS, which I'm not I'm not going to put in. I'm going to draw on the bottom of that in so I'll draw it again. Yeah, I'm sure it is. So that should give us a, a roadmap to follow, hopefully. Yeah, that's looking good. I'll just keep it on with a bit of um, masking tape in case I need to come back to it because that wouldn't altogether surprise me if I did. So let's just check that we've got that line that we put in. That is so near the mark, it's impressive considering I really didn't know what I was doing. So let's get a paintbrush in our hands again. I'm not using open today, so. <laughs> um, I'm probably up against it a bit with the open time for my paints. Let's do this bit in here, which as you can see is a really, really dark colour. I mean, even on this, which we've brightened, it's still a dark colour. So I'm going to take um, some some very raw umber and mix mix it through with a little bit of golden black. I think Mars black, um, thinking about it, is too black. It's a very, it, black in, in any painting really deadens it. Um, whereas this bone black, especially now we've mixed it with a bit of raw umber, it'll be dark, it'll read as black, but it won't sap the life out of the painting. Um, that's quite a nice, good colour that we've got there. So that comes around, around there. It's so much easier when you know where you're going. Don't forget, we're just at the blocking in stage. So, you know, don't. Don't no panic about things. We just need the base colour, the predominant colour that's in any area. Choose that and do your blocking in. Then you can come back and you sort of know where you are then. What needs to be lightened, what needs to be darkened, etc. And if you feel like you're progressing, you know, when you've blocked something in. It's usually good practice to go in there. Way you think they're 
It is the grain of the wood would be going. Grain of wood, the way that feathers lie, the way that furs fur lies on a on a pet and animal. Um it, it really is, otherwise on some occasions, particularly uh dog cat hair, if you don't go the way that the fur's going in the first instance, you're absolutely fighting your paint ever more. Whereas if you do, you've got a really good start. Now I'll leave that there to dry. It will dry darker. Um, but let's just see, you know, how dark. It's going to need another coat anyway, because that's uh, slightly patchy. And actually, I could probably use some more, seeing as I've got it, got it out mixed. There's another little bit here above our. Well, I'm going to call it toilet cistern, and I'm not sure. Well, it's not, but it looks like one. Go with a painter there. Painter that. Oh, it's coming down there. I'll make a really poor joiner. Need a bit of wood, like a toilet cistern. That dark goes all the way up to there, really. See where else um where else it is well we've got it mixed with some under this hook which we know is there so we've painted over it but we we know it's there and it comes pretty much all the way along to the toilet system what is that? She said, Mr. H. That toilet system. Yeah, I haven't got a reference drawing, so I can't actually oh, see right. from here. Okay. I think it's a toilet system. See if I can pull it up and uh, help you out. I'm not sure they necessarily fit into the <laughs> miniature toilets in for <laughs> for the whole bowl. For the whole bowls, yeah. It probably would have been better if they had. It would have made them cl the cleaning up job much better, I'll bet. Well, possibly. Though I suspect if you're on a railway carriage with a big door like that, you just hang it out and let it <laughs> flap in the wind, as it were. Oh no. I hope they don't do it as a passing through. <laughs> <laughs> passing through town. Yeah, please don't flush in the station. Yeah. That sort of thing. Well, it'd be even worse, wouldn't it? That's too thick at the top, but we'll rectify that way. That's just comes down as far as there. And then there's a dark bit on this panel up here. And it goes all the way to there actually. Turn your brush around so you've got the sun bit where we want it to be. They're fantastic brushes, these are pointy rainbow shaders. So the, I'm just looking around, seeing as I've got this colour mix, I just want to make the most of it really. So I've also got a dark bit on the top of here, which is slightly thicker at this end than this end. And just as you come down, um, that's also quite dark in there. That fades away into a sort of low sienna type colour. It appears in the photograph just to be a single piece of, of metal. Metal. Yeah, maybe it's something to do with the sliding mechanism, do you think? I think it most probably is. Yeah. Some silver. Some silver from whatever was there before. Yeah. Um, and there's some dark. Back to the, yeah. the physical box shape, I think it's just a single oh, piece right. of, of metal. 
drop it under them here. There's some bolts and bits and bats. We'll get them in our second pattern. It's pretty dark all the way along actually along there. Around him, I nearly dropped his iPad there and nearly had a heart attack. But we're alright. None of those things did actually happen. Right, so I think we're alright at that. We'll go on and look at another colour. So this bit here belongs to that bit there. Yeah, that's okay. That's all going down the way. We're not interested in that at the moment. Um, I'm going to put out some uh, raw sienna. The, it's the Liquitex one, as I, as I told you. So I really don't know about its coverage or anything else. I mean, a lot of people do like Liquitex, so I'm quite sure it's a good paint. It says Liquitex Professional, everybody. So, um, you know, they're an old company. They've been going for a long time, so I'm sure they're very good. So let's see where we need raw sienna in this. We need it up here. I'm literally going to work along from one end to the other um, with this colour. Let's see where we need it. I've still got the other colour, the dark colour on my on the brush, so I'm getting a bit of blending, which isn't a bad thing in this instance. There's another colour involved here that's kind of a pinky colour. It's a strange one. So just draw that into the, the, the dark that we've just done. So we get a sort of blend, if you like. Uh, so that brings us to here. So I've just done that. So along here there is some raw sienna, some dark in that bit there that we didn't do, but I still have it so I'll come back and do that. I think it's doing a good job this raw sienna actually, so pleased with it. Covering up the canvas very nicely. Which is basically all you can ask for with some paint, I don't think. Right, then. Well, this part up here, well, no, there, there is some up there. Actually, it's a little bit lighter. So I'll just take some of that and mix it through. Light colour. I say I've still got some like dark in the brush, so still fighting it a little bit. But up here, this region here is it's lighter than that. It's a funny sort of colour. I don't really know what sort of colour it is. But it's a panel of something that I think's been used as a as a roof. That would be my guess. See that dark colour coming out now into my brush, onto the, I don't know what to call it, canvas. I hell no, I'm concentrating quite. So this comes down here. I think we might have to tackle this with a bit of yellow or something. It looks like yellow. Lots of nice shades going on in that anyway. Uh, works a lot. It's nice. And then some. And so this here is a very purpley pink in colour, um, which I do think we have to address actually. I don't think we can just budget. 
I'm gonna leave this light color going on sort of in between here. Just a bit thick at the time that you remember. I'll just pair that back now. And that comes down and there's some dark actually um, where the hook is attached. So we'll catch that the next time round. Uh, the side of this hook mechanism is light and it's light on the other side as well. So then we've got this same funny colour with another roof panel. I'm sure if you've um, printed it out, this lighter reference picture, you'll be reaping the rewards. I know I am. I just I couldn't work it out for love and money where things were supposed to be. That comes down into this dark bit here. And there's a purple bit there as well. And I've left this because I obviously didn't think it was dark enough to be black. Um, actually, just coming up to there, there's a very light bit on that. So this will have to dry brush that into that beam by the ones that we did first. Lighten that up a little bit, perhaps even a little bit more to be honest. Kids are home from school, Bobby's watching them out the back playing and thinks he should be there too. I'm just going to make this really quite light. Because it is really just quite light. Okay, so there's a light bit up here. Um, and then this one down here is uh, sort of sienna with, uh, with a bit of titanium, buff titanium in it. I mean, you know, if, if you're not um, comfortable doing all this or you don't want to do it all you know you just want a nice quick painting and um, do it brown it's, you know take the shape and, and just paint it all in in a, a raw umber and it'll be fine so I've got to address the color of that plate thing um, there's a funny color up in here and here there and that needs to be a bit darker and a bit darker in there. And then that's that funny pinky colour there as well. I did another job trying to mix that very strange colour. Um, I need a darkish colour. The air paint's starting to dry. It's quite a nice dark colour just for that little, little inset in there. Um, I just need to really reinstate the top of here because it's the top of a plank that goes all the way along. So it needs to be you know, noticed as that really. Um, so by the time we get to here it's gone that weird purple colour. Right, okay. I'm just, I'm just having a good look at it to make sure that we've got all that we need in. There is a mark there. I'm not sure what it is, but it's there. That's what it is. Look, it goes all the way along there. Just a sort of 
continuity. Right, so now I need to address this um, terrible cover. I don't really know. Oh, where to start with it, to be honest. Um, well, the first one, yeah. Right, now I'm supposed to be the purple. I'd say it needs a bit of brown in it and then some titanium pulp. Let's give that a go and see what happens. I'm not going to use that brush for my acrylic. So a bit of this, a bit of that, a bit more of this. And then some of that, that colour here, that's not too bad. So that was um, purple, raw umber, and uh, the bleach, the unbleached titanium white or titanium buff, or however you choose to address it, call it. Different manufacturers call it different things. So we'll block this in with that. It's quite incredible. Can't believe it. I thought we were going to be messing around for long with that. If you haven't got purple, incidentally, if you haven't got purple paint, and I appreciate a lot of you might not have purple paint, it's not the colour you use, um, you know, on a daily basis. Um, but, you know, you know that it's it's blue and it's red mixed together. So we'll get in the purple. Well, it depends which blue and which red you use. But uh, ultramarine and pyro red or something like that would give you a good, good purple. You've been doing a bit of research. Oh yeah. And the CNS that you found was written on yeah. the thing stands for Colorado and Southern Railway. Oh, we're right then. And uh, they were a railway that ran from 1898 to, nine, 18, to 1981 uh, and they operated in Colorado Maybe when did you say shut down 81? 81. I mean, that's a few years ago now. Well, if it's just sat out 30, 40 years, in I a suppose. sort of sub desert environment. That's true. Anyway, that's probably narrowed it down to where this picture <laughs> yeah. was taken. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Blinking good research, Mr. H. Where the uh, where the hook is hanging. Now I know there's a line along here, so and I have put it in on that one, but I, I don't like it. It's too too dramatic. A, a join to my liking, so I'm just gonna feather that in a little bit. And when we come back, we can feather it the other way if we're not, you know, if we're not happy with it. I'm just going to do the same here. There is a black edge on there, which I think I've painted over. Uh, so that needs to be reinstated because it's quite a crucial part of the 
of the whole shebang. Like I say, just throw that in, dry brush it in, whatever, whatever you want. Just um, don't have a definite line. I mean, you can. It is in the picture. It's a definite line. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. This line down here needs to be black. Which once I've finished with this colour, I'll do. It's a very strange colour to find in a train. Or anywhere, actually. Do I have that straight? Well, that's the colour of this blooming purpley thing. It is. But, but it's there, quite definitely, you can see it. It's my own eyes. Maybe come to the surface as it's dried. Who knows, eh? Or maybe the interior was painted, dyed at some point with some wood preservative. Yeah. I mean, it's not a drastic purple. It's just on the on the cusp of purpleness. <laughs> if you know what I mean. So we are looking at an artist. Lighting. Yeah, that's what I was Even thinking. Because, you know, I was thinking, should I not have paid any attention to this purple at all? No, no, I think it. Um, I don't think it looks out of place. Right, so we've got a couple of uh, lines that we need to put in again in the very dark. Yeah, of course, when it's washes and details and stuff's gone in, yeah. then uh, I don't think it will uh, stand out as being odd. I'm going to have to mix some up again because it's uh, my original mix has dried up. So it's a raw umber, bone black, the mixture that we're using here. Actually, I think I've just swamped that with bone black. I'll just take a bit more raw umber. Makes up a really nice dark colour that isn't black, but is on the border of being black. So I've got a, this down here is actually quite, quite a thick line, it comes down the side of our hook, or it's the wave, or whatever, I don't know. So that, that goes in there, which is in a slightly different straight. Um, there isn't really much of a black line there. I've got enough, I think, for what I want. I might just bring it down a little bit further. Um, and then there's this black line here. And really, there's quite a lot of dark around there. I don't know why I didn't think it was this dark. Definitely is on this um, piece of timber that's coming across the box car. Kind of like that. It's all in the roof, I presume. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so, because it's got that panel on it. So <coughs> now this one's a weird colour. It's really weird. Um, I'm going to have to come back to that one because I haven't got any weird mixed on my palette. Um, then we come down to there, and that then becomes this this side's problem. It ceased to be my problem anymore. Today, point, anyway. today, <laughs> no doubt it will become a problem at some stage, but not today. That's got a bit of a bit of dark in through it there. How are we doing for time? Well, now we've actually got that. 
been really just on the hour yeah. mark. Um, is there anything more you need to get to um, that white bit underneath? That and the, the wing thing. Yeah. Give them the bonus of doing them. I'm going to do that. I'm not finishing today until I've got this blocked in. Tell me that now. I want I want everybody, including me, to feel that we've really made progress today. Indeed. And then first thing back next time, we shall uh, we'll, we'll finish that off. Yeah. Get the detail, the shading, yeah. the lights and darks. Exactly. In. Put some dark behind that. Make it stand out. Um, and pretty much on the other side as well. It's got a hook, if you remember. So I might have to put white in today for the hook um, and then come back. And, well, I'll try and get that purple in actually if I can. This is really dark. This is like second coat here, but don't tell the sound of it. Oops, I told them that's just blocking it. Ah, you see, that's square. And I've just painted it not square. Uh, right, okay, that's fine. Let's just go back to the purple. Oh, don't dry up on me. There's a little bit of wet there that might just be enough. That's a square shape there. This uh, piece of metal we've been debating. So it all needs to be the same colour. Needs a lot uh, done to it in the next pass. As it were, but uh, we'll just get some colour on it today. Please be enough, please. I don't know if I spritz it, that might give it back some life. There somewhere. Uh, any, any more for any more? Yeah, there's that there, which I'm guessing is the same colour, so I'm going to put it in in purple. You can always redress these little issues when we come back to put in the detail. I think that's probably the right colour anyway, as it is. Um, now then, the hook. I need a little brush to put a hook in. This is it. I'm going to put it in, well, I've only got titanium, so this is my lightest colour. So I'm going to put it in with that, um, so as when I come back the next time, it's got a foundation. Thin as the thin brushes. Don't rush your painting, please. Take time with it and enjoy it. I am actually enjoying this though. Mm, no need to be in too rush. There might be another video coming along soon. <laughs> so that's our hook in there, um, and there is some light either side down here. Sort of a plate or something that it's uh, attached to, and the top part where it's on the roof is a bit darker. Let's see if we can find any of this colour. In. It's a slightly darker one. So there. This is ridiculous with a side brush, but never mind. You get the gist, I'm sure. There we are. Right. Okay. I think I'm blocked in. I think we've got the general gist of that. Doesn't look too bad, I would say. Um, hang on, one more thing I just want to do is go into the uh, raw sienna, and it's just these two uh, lines along here. You just need a little bit of um, oranging up. I don't mind then if we come back and put a lighter wash over them. We do need to have this colour in first. And 
Okay. Well, but at the end we did all right, I think. Actually, um, I, as I said, they're going out twice weekly now. So if you can, if you can get your one done before the, the next one goes out, then you know we, you'll, you'll be keeping up, and that's uh, that's what we want. Get masking tape off. He's got like a proddy thing. I mean, you could have just said, couldn't you? Why don't you take the masking tape off? <laughs> Where would be the fun in that? Where would be the fun in that? Well, I think you could take that off now, can't you? Yeah, I can take that off. <laughs> that is dark, isn't it? That colour there, it is dark. Yeah. Let's take it just off. Of, you know. Please don't bring my tree off. There we are. Yeah. Looks quite good, doesn't it? Yep. Considering that's just the first. Um, when that side, right hand side comes in, it'll really sort of place that tree. Uh, even, yeah, it's even still. Even that's giving it some. Yeah, focus. it's still wandering a little bit in uh, in no man's land, that tree. It's a floating tree. Yeah, and that li this little um, vignette down here, it just, just looks odd, doesn't it? Yeah, but I think we I think we made good progress today with that, and uh, when we come back the next time, We'll uh, sort all that out. Actually, it doesn't, you know, when you look at it, it doesn't actually need that much. And then we'll move on to the roof of the old barn itself. That will probably be the next session, I would think. Parting this up and the roof. That's the next session. Yeah. All right, ladies and gents, thanks ever so much for joining me. There is a donate button on my YouTube page, um, channel, should I say. Up, up at the top where my uh, name is. So thank you. I'll see you soon. Bye. Me and the boys were sitting around drinking. We was talking about things that we was thinking. When all of a sudden, what comes out of Bill's mouth? Said I'm getting old and fat and slow, and I don't recover like I did before from nights of rabble, rousing and too much fun. Well, I looked around and we all agreed, and I had a drink and I ordered three, and I staggered back to do it all again. And we made an oath on a rum and coke with the best intention, I'm sure you know, that we would stop this living in excess. We're gonna have one more party, one more special occasion, do it Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, holidays and weekends, we can have one more party, there's more hell we should be racing. One more party now, one more party tonight.